What's up guys, Corvus95 here and welcome to another episode of the Let's Mess With series on my channel. Today we have the new Master of Orion. I never played um, Mu 1 through 3. This is actually the first time playing Master of Orion. I only picked it up two days ago now. I've been having a lot of fun with it however. And it's definitely a game I would recommend you try out. There are a few things that need to be worked on, but on the whole, it's very complete. It's in early access on Steam. You can get it as a complete pack where you get the first three Master of Orion games and this for, I think it's about £30. So yeah, first of all, let's get set up. So in this screen, this is the new game screen, there's going to be someone commentating, they just read this description basically, and you can see the six current races, unfortunately, this is one thing they need to work on, every time you click on one of these, it restarts the description, so it gets pretty annoying when you're just scrolling through them all. So I'll go through a bit of, about them. So we've got Alkari, whose leader is a Skylord. They're lofty and flexible and honourable. Their homeworld will always start with artifacts on it, which increase um, research speed on that specific planet. We've got their beam defense is 25% higher, and they start with the tech physics. The starting techs don't make that much of a difference because they usually can be researched in like three to five turns, depending on how you set up your planet. So I don't feel like the starting techs even need to be in. Maybe if it was two levels of starting tech, it would be a bit more powerful, a bit more diversity. I am looking forward to being able to create a custom race, to see what traits I can add to it. We've got the Bulrathi, who are like the these bear creatures. The their leader is Grovog. They are headstrong, territorial, and ferocious. They rely their homeworld has rich minerals, which means they have better production than most other planets. Enemy attacks. Um, they are tolerant. Every race is tolerant to normal gravity. There's three levels of gravity, low, normal, and high. And the Bullrathi are tolerant to both normal and high gravity. So they won't get... Because if you... For example, if I was using the Alkari, as I've just shown you, they don't have tolerance to anything but normal. So if I found a high gravity planet and placed a colony on that planet, then the Alkari's colony there would only work at 50% efficiency. So the, the Bulrathi have that high gravity tolerance, they also start with physics. We've got the humans, they start with After government, of they're the diplomats conflict, of the universe, improves negotiations, it makes all as more likely to accept your deals. Form, it so it's a decent ability. The many they also have a penalty to counter espionage, so they're not that good at finding people spying on them. That doesn't matter in the game at the minute, however, because espionage isn't in the game yet. Like, the modifiers are, but there's no way to actually spy on each other yet. So that'll get added in a later update. We've got the Mirshan, who I think are my favourite race so far. It's either them or the Cylons. So they, their homeworld will always be a large planet with normal gravity. Um, their uber planet, so there's a tech where it lets you upgrade deserts into grassland planets. Without which basically question. means the deserts become Martians a lot more powerful and and in, long history if you're playing as the Mirshan. They have a different ground they unit, the extended barracks, the and they start with engineering. The Got the Cylons, who are the scientific the masters of the universe. They start with a large homeworld, which has normal gravity. The, every one of their tech, their population units gives you, if you've got them working in research, they'll give you 1.5 research instead of 1, basically. They're tolerant to low gravity and they start with government, same as the humans. 
Then we have the Sakra, who ways. come from the a tropical... They can turn swamp planets slow. into tropical planets, Seems similar to how the Mioshan can turn deserts into grasslands. They consume 25% less food than the every other race Sakura from the planet so far in the game, and they start with biology tech. So I think for races. this one, we are going to start with the Bulrathi. They're actually the Harsh only race I haven't played as yet. As you can see, you can have up to five opponents. You've got two galaxy type circle or spiral. Spiral often has certain pathways in which you can't travel until you get further along the tech line. But I think we'll just go circle. So you've got a choice of small, medium, and large. For spiral, you only have a choice of medium and large. There's no small. So we'll just do a small galaxy. We'll do it with the max of three. For some reason, this third person never shows up. We'll do with the Mirshan, the Humans, and the Sakura. Um, we can't change difficulty level in this um, early access version. Young, generally more habitable planets. No, technically. So in young galaxy age, the planets are normally less habitable, but have more resources. Average is average, and then old, the more habitable, but they have less resources. So we'll go young. You can randomize your Big Bang Seed. Advanced settings wise, we've got pirates, monsters, random events, and then there's three current victory types. Excellent when you reach 500 turns, whoever has the highest score wins. Diplomatic if you get elected. Chancellor if you become Palpatine, basically you win diplomatic victory and there's also domination victory if you conquer every other race so let's get into the game so it's quite a quick loading time as you can see my computer's kind of powerful it's not super powerful though i'll let you watch a good scene devoted for millennia to the conservation of their home planet ursa the hulking balrathi are a fierce kin the will of the spirits is revealed to them through the Hag, an elder, shamanic guide who speaks for all living things. She has now called on the Emperor of the Bulrathi to take this message beyond Ursa, to ensure the survival of the wilds, and put the whole galaxy under their protection, by any means necessary. So that's a little preview of what the Bulrathi are all about. All hail the pride and honor of the Bulrathi. This is an honor. of furs and the sharpest of claws. I'm humbled you still remember old Kuru as your high chancellor. Okay, so that's a no that's an annoying thing that they haven't removed yet. That tutorial system where it tells you what to do like oh you should make such and such right now you can't get rid of that as far as i can see there's no way to remove that there's also a gnn news thing where these two robots come speak to you i turned that off i hate that kind of thing it's kind of cool the first time but after that it's a bit annoying so anyway this is our home planet ursa prime if we go and manage structures, you can see this is the way of seeing your what structures your planet has. So, for example, it has a capital building, has a star base, has a marine barracks. It, so it has those three. The annoying thing about this, there's no list of what your planet actually has, which I hope they add, they'll add. So you can split year population. So we have eight population currently and a limit of 11 on this planet because it's a medium size Terran rich planet with seagrass. So we'll get a food boost, which is nice. So you can split between these three groups, research, food and production. It'll often start you, I think it always starts you two, three, three. And as you can see, so this guy produces four food, this one produces four, this one only produces three. Because the soil, like these two farm in the most fertile areas, and then this guy farms in a slightly less fertile area, I guess. And it's the same for production. Research, at this point in the game, it's basically just going to be one across the board. Nothing you can really do to change that. You've got morale to look out for. And the better morale you have, if you have low morale, 
basically some people will go on strike so if you have really high morale you can raise taxes higher and higher without people going on strike so it's going to produce a colony ship that's always the first move that the game auto makes okay so to we have a fleet here it's three ships a scout a scout and a frigate so that's a military ship these two are just scouts they can't actually they don't have any combat score and to separate them you you left click on the ship you want and then you just right click on a point so i can click on here and it'll take us to there I can click on there and it'll queue up moves to take me to there we have a unexplored um asteroid belt in our system can't really do anything with it at this point so there's no point exploring it so i think we'll send this scout over to this system this scout over to this system and this frigate down to here we'll choose our research so similar to the civilization series there is a tech tree scrolling left to right and there's a difference however to the civilization tech tree certain techs have a, div a dividing line through the middle and that means if I unlock fusion weapons, I research it, I have to choose either fusion beam or fusion bomb. I can't have both. Although I believe you can trade techs with certain other races you'll encounter. So if you need, if you chose fusion beam and then lots of your ships are using bombs, then you can trade with another, um, with another empire to get the fusion bomb. Or you could just wait until you get a better bomb along the way, probably like the antimatter bomb. So I think to start off, so we got physics automatically. One of my favorite things to go for is the deep scanner. Simply because it, when you enter a system, you automatically discover all the planets in that system. So I'm going to go straight for that. Yes, I know. See, it, it gets really annoying when it's every other, like, turn. You have him popping up saying, do this, do that. Okay, so should I send, him, should I send the colony ship to Callisto, to Ra, or to Concordia? Concordia has more planets, so I'm going to send it there. Which is a bit stupid since there, that's not where the scouts are going. So now we have to choose a production... Automated factory is almost always the best thing to go for because it just increases your production and makes sure you always have production even if you have no one working there. So is it going to be four turns? No, it's going to be six if we moved him out of the way. So we'll send these on their way. So we've discovered these two systems. We will send this scout to this planet. And it's a decent planet, it's a large size, with artifacts, it's barren however, so you wouldn't get very much farming done there. And it has decent mineral amounts. That's likely a gas giant, so I'm going to send it a slightly smaller planet. This is a medium, arid, abundant, with dark quartz, which increases your production totals. Our frigate can go here. Discover Concordia Prime, which is medium, volcanic, and abundant, with artifacts and we'll bring the colony ship to the edge of this system on to the next turn i think we're going to send him there it was a gas giant so raw two so it's a giant gas giant abundant so it has no biome as you can see there and high gravity which means we can't actually sell the colony here until we get a further tech which allows us to convert gas giants into large planets so Callisto Prime is ultra rich with gold, however it's really poor on farming and on total population. It's got a max pop of 5. So it's not a really good place to sell. As you can see, when we got close to this system, we discovered how many planets were in it. We can't visit that system because we can only go down these routes, so we'll probably have to go to here and then it'll link this way. There's an asteroid belt in that system. We're going to send this to here in the hopes that nice. this, is important. this is a nice planet. And we've done, detected a monster. 
So down here, there is a space eel. So we'll have to get some fighter ships if we want to actually head to see that space eel. So we could go here, it's decent. Toxic biome, however. Let's send our colony ship here in the hopes that it's nice. It's not. It's not a nice planet. So I'm actually going to head... Well, I'm going to actually explore with our other ships, see if they find a nice planet. And you are going to head... So blue-white stars nearly never have any planets around them. So I'm going to send them that way, and then you can come this way with you going... with you going that way. So choose production again. Okay, thank you. So pollution builds up. The more production-based focus you do, the more industrial waste you'll produce. So you can use pollution cleanup. I'm going to build another colony ship, and then I'm going to show the queue and build pollution cleanup. I'm going to, however, move this into food production to boost our population. And next turn. So we discovered an anomaly here, which these anomalies, is this a nice planet? See, this is a decent planet. It's not amazing, but it's decent. So it's going to take us two turns to go here, and we may find, we'll probably find credits, but you can also find all our ships, which is actually really helpful if you get a free colony ship or a free military ship. That's quite nice to get. Okay, you go to here. Actually, I think we're going to send this this way because there's four planets in this system, so it's likely one of these will be very nice to, Arriving to colonize. Arriving at the anomaly, so your fleet spots an abandoned container filled with rare minerals floating unguarded in open space. You tell yourself some smuggler on the run must have jettisoned their cargo. Nobody is around to claim it, so you add it to your treasury without a second thought. So we gain 54 credits from that. I don't really like the anomalies. They usually never give you much. Like, it doesn't really help. Like 54 credits, sure, it's pretty nice. But when most things cost, like, at least 300 credits. Now, this is the kind of plan I was looking for. Kenyan 2 is a huge ocean planet with ultra-rich minerals. It's almost a perfect planet. Huge. And then, um, is it Arya? It's A-R-I-A. -A, um, biome. And then ultra-rich minerals with normal gravity. And then a random special will be perfect for any planet. So we're going to send the colony ship there. You're going to go there next. Okay. And now I'm just going to tell it to move. And our colony ship is going to arrive, and we're going to set up our first colony. So we have Kutsi in here. This is our colony ship, coming in for landing on the water planet. And... This is the planet. So if we go manage structures, you can get a good view of what the planet actually looks like. So not much landmass, which is why it's an ocean planet. But if you look, max population of 15, which is due to the huge size. Ultra rich minerals means we're getting like five, five, four, four, four. And because of the ocean biome, we're getting pretty good food supply as well. Five, four, four, three, three. So we'll start on the automated factory, and we will get exploring some more. Okay, next step. Right, fleet needs orders. So this one can... What's that? That's... I thought it was a planet there, but it wasn't. So we'll send that one there. Send this guy over here. What was this planet? It's decent. It's a swamp one. So if we're playing as the Sakra, I think they're called, 
that would be really good that's one planet because it could turn into a tropical planet which is very good for colonizing so this this system has two gas giants in which is a bit unfortunate there's the galaxy view it's a small galaxy with three other empires and i haven't actually run into any of them yet I do want to, this will probably be a half hour video as opposed to the normal 20 minutes because I do want to show off the combat in this game. So when I find something to fight, I'll show it off. I'm not actually going to play this how I would normally play it. I have actually only done combat once in this game because I usually go the diplomatic route. This is a very poor system, because it's around a blue-white star, so only a gas giant appeared. So this is a scout, which can't actually fight, so I'm not going to fight that yet. I'm going to see a gas giant, yeah. And I think... Where's my home system gone? Here. I think instead of the colony ship, we're actually going to build another frigate. I'm going to rush it, and then we're going to buy it. Because I want to go find that, fight that eel. I learned about this during my serve. So what, what power does this eel have? 461, compared to my 131 for my frigate. So it's not, it's not a high chance that we'll actually win. We'll have another frigate this way. We could see if there's an actual race this way. I'd prefer to run into a race, but if we can't, it's not the end of the world. So that's a decent planner. It's very similar to Spore, which I've been playing. Oh, there's a plan. There's a race. friend. I am the president of the Human Republic. May the cooperation between our races be ever fruitful. So I think I've actually got that setting a bit low, the graphical, well, let's put Andy Alias on, and let's put quality on fantastic. If it's going to, it might not work. I'll come back when it works. Okay guys, so the game is working again. Just a bit of lag there whilst I upgraded the quality. There might be a little bit of lag now. It's not as fast as it once was. But that's because of the updated quality. So we are going to go attack the humans. So we're going to send this ship over to here. And we're going to bring the frigate from down here. Well, we're going to let it finish its move. And we're actually going to send it across. Hopefully the human's soul system is actually this way. So as you can see, this system doesn't even have a single planet in it. Which is a bit poor for us. But that does sometimes happen. Let's actually head this way. So they could choose to attack me at this point. Is that just a scout ship? Yeah, so they couldn't actually choose to attack me because it's a scout. Um, do we have any pollution here? No. So I think I'm going to get started on a star base. And then I'm actually going to move this to food. As you can see, because of the automated factory, we still have three production. So we're going to produce food still. Which is nice. But it's because of that and the colony base also has two Oh, also has one production automatically. So our scout is now here. We can send it... Let's actually try and find the soul system. There's soul. So it doesn't look like it's accessible from down here. It might be. So we'll try and get across. The colony ship we can send... Did we find a nice place to settle? That one was unexplored. That one is Dark Quartz, which isn't very nice. That one's decent. I basically look for biome first of all. 
first and foremost because it allows you it allows you to increase your population faster because you have got more food tiles basically okay so we are actually going to go to the soul system could be of aid in our campaign. so they have a space factory everything and that tells me that there's actually a warp point here somewhere every single um empire start system will start with a planet plus either an asteroid belt or a gas giant and there is actually an alien race here and it is the humans so it's very nice so they actually have a military outpost here which stops me from going this through this passageway i'm actually going to go past the eel and we've discovered another alien race welcome stranger i am the empress of the mershan bride if you scratch our backs we'll scratch yours so yeah Another alien race. I must stick out my claws on this. So we are going to use this frigate to attack the Mershan. Because they must have... What do you have? You have a frigate of your own. I think we'll actually attack the frigate, possibly. Because it'll be more exciting than attacking the scout. So let's actually attack the frigate. Or do we have n no movement? We do have movement. How do you attack? Let's go here. And then let's attack. So we're going tactical. Yes. We'd like to declare war on the humans. Oh, I didn't think about this. This is my way of me be the lag. So there's our ship arriving. And there is their ship. It was already here. So as you can see, this is our ship. It's very small on the screen at the minute. If I zoom in a bit. So if we attack their ship, you can actually hide behind hide behind meteors if you are clever in how you play this. And I think we are actually going to lose. Oh, we did get destroyed by the human ship as we attempted to hide. Bit unfortunate, but I'm not used to the combat in this yet. Our beam accuracy was 66%. Our PD accuracy? I'm not sure exactly what PD is. They had nuclear missiles. That's probably why I was getting destroyed, because their missile accuracy was 83%, which is very good. They deal dealt almost twice as much damage to us, and we lost that fight, unfortunately. The galaxy will be better off without you anyway. He doesn't sound like he means that, the voice actor. He sounds a lot nicer than that. So, has someone settled here? Is this the humans? Yeah, this is a human planet. Large, Terran, abundant. They got very lucky there. It's a very nice planet. And, yeah, I think we're going to start on five frigates here. Because we're kind of need it. And I think that's going to be the end of this episode of Let's Mess With. So, on the whole, I would definitely recommend you pick up um, Master of Orion, the new one. If you don't want to pay £30 for the collector's edition with the previous three Master of Orion games, I'm sure it'll be on um, sale in the Steam so store during Easter, most likely. They usually have a sale, a big sale around Easter, so I'm sure they'll have it like maybe 25% off. So you could wait for Easter to come out, it'll be more developed by then, some of the issues I've brought up will probably be fixed. And yeah, if you've enjoyed the episode, leave a like on the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button for me, 
I would like to aim, I didn't hit 15 subscribers last week like I wanted to, so I'm going to raise it by 1, try and get to 16. So if you could get me to 16 subscribers by next Saturday, I would be extremely thankful. And if you've enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching, and from me, Corvus95, goodbye.